hi uh, this is going to be a short and concise intro to music which is multiple signal classification to do that we begin with the signal model uh, for that we just let's just see the system model what it is right it's an m element uniform linear array let's just assume it doesn't have to be linear array of course but yeah uh, there are n targets which is let's say this one is uh, the this this one is a target this one is a target and this one is a target and there are other targets as well let's say and right and they are like kind of uh, just sending some signals and they are getting captured by this array and this a of theta one is the geometric channel between this target and the array and a of theta two where theta one is the direction the true direction that we do not know and theta 2 is the direction of this uh, target right and this is the geometric channel similarly this is again theta n is the true direction and a of theta n which is a vector it's a column vector and i will show you what actually uh, what actually of theta n looks like uh, for uls and this is the geometrical channel vector uh, right and now the signal model actually looks like y equals to as plus n where y is the received signal a actually collects all of these array factors or the geometric channels s is the signal that they are sending which has this uh, the dimension of s is n cross 1 for one snapshot if let's say we take thousand snapshots then s, s would be n cross thousand right and n is the received and as a signal in the receiver it would be thermal noise or something else as well so a actually looks like this and s and a of theta actually looks like this and you can actually derive this from very basic uh, array signal processing as well which it's not that difficult right now what do we do because we actually have just the received signal y right and we have to use this received signal to determine where the theta 1 theta 2 and theta n is that is the main problem so to do that we actually calculate the received covariance matrix which is r of y which is expectation of y of y hermitian and you can calculate that at a r s a hermitian plus sigma square i where sigma square is the noise variance that we assume and obviously iid and everything all of those assumptions are made and also the targets are for now we are assuming they are uncorrelated targets as well so and where what is rs rs would be the expectation of ss hermitian which is essentially the uh, this uh, signal that they are sending as well next is the question would be what is the rank of this received covariance matrix uh, it is interesting because that's how we will actually start estimating the number of targets because you have to realize that we actually also do not know what n is right what we are receiving is an m cross m matrix after we like calculate this it's an m cross m m is the number of uh, the elements in the array right so we do not know what n is we have to find n so to do that one of the introductory method is to actually see or like investigate the rank of actually we have to uh, rank of this a r s a r mission rank of this right I'm just calling that covariance matrix as well without essentially without the presence of noise so this is the rank of the covariance matrix you can see that you can actually write it in this form right and so the rank of a r s a hermitian is equals to rank of this let's call this b or we also do not have to call this b right and what the, what is the rank of b the rank of b is n because this uh, the dimension of this a r s to the power half is m cross n and n is smaller so the rank of this is n which is interesting right because see this whole thing the dimension of this is m but the rank of it is n right which means if we uh, see the eigenvalues of r of this r y right what will happen 
is this it will have n eigenvalues corresponding to the signal right and everything else would be zero if sigma square is zero but because sigma square has some small value it will have m minus n eigenvalues corresponding to the noise variance so it will have m minus n eigenvalues which will have this value sigma square if you know sigma square then you can easily estimate what m minus n is by seeing the eigenvalues of this r of y and you already know m so you should be able to calculate n and there are other more sophisticated ways to do this as well but this is just the more uh, basic the most basic way to do this right uh, and I, I i hope you guys understand this whole logic i can again make a bigger video or go a little bit in depth as well but yeah this is the primary principle that you have to realize because this will be useful as well right and this n eigenvalues they correspond to the signal those m minus n eigenvalues correspond to the noise right now what happens is uh, to obviously estimate the number of targets we can just count how many eigenvalues of the received covariance matrix is close to the noise variance and now you know the number of targets next would be actually calculating the spectrum right uh, now here comes the second concept as well is that let's say we have this e which is the eigenvector matrix of r y and e of s consists of only the eigenvector corresponding to the n largest eigenvalues or the signal subspace basically the signal subspace right all of the eigen like the n eigenvectors corresponding to this n eigenvalues that will create this signal subspace and the en will consist of this eigenvector corresponding to these eigenvalues which is corresponding to the noise now the interesting fact here is that when you know the noise subspace right when you know the noise subspace then this uh, E n Hermitian a of theta where this theta is from the set from the discrete set of theta 1 theta 2 theta n for all of these thetas right for all of these thetas you will actually see because this is the null space or the noise subspace and this is like their orthogonal so this will be approximately zero right so which is very nice because we can now create a spectrum or a, an angle dependent power spectrum or like not power spectrum an angle dependent spectrum which is uh, which is one divided by this the norm square because at all of those theta one theta two and theta ends this will go to zero so this will have a very sharp peak there are other methods as well uh, for this direction finding problem but they do not have as sharp peak as this so there are obviously like the i'm just comparing between the basic methods but there are a lot of like direction finding algorithms that that are generally in the umbrella term of subspace based method because this is subspace right and we're using this subspace property to actually calculate spectrum so yeah that's the spectrum if you calculate this then you can uh, you can see the peaks i have actually also done a simulation on this right so yeah this is the simulation and uh, this is done in manim in python as well and as you can see the rm elements are eight the element spacing is chosen to be lambda by two right and all of that number of snapshots is good as you can see the music spectrum is here calculated like this and you can see the peak at minus 61.4 and 58.6 as well see and yeah that's how you get the uh, data and you can act absolutely calculate the spectrum as well yeah that's it i will also include the manim code probably if i'm not feeling too lazy but that's it